First, language acquisition theories. There are some common theories about how children learn language. The first two videos in the series uh, explored what it looks like as children learn to speak. But this one considers how the learning occurs and what some of the main theories are. I take an eclectic approach, approach to most of my life. If you aren't familiar with the word eclectic, it means that I combine ideas and theories from many different books and perspectives and people to create my own idea. First language acquisition would be one of those where I actively embrace an eclectic view largely because I'm uncertain whether one theory completely answers all the questions. Let's briefly look at theories from behaviorist, innatist, developmentalist, interactionist, and connectionist. Behaviorists uh, believe language is learned through imitation and practice. So when a three-year-old repeats a phrase their parent just said, they are imitating the correct grammar from the adult. When they re repeat particular words or phrases over and over, they're practicing them in order to learn them. This seems a reasonable explanation for some language learning. But it doesn't explain how children can correctly create sentences they've never heard before. The hardcore behaviorist would try to argue that the child heard it somewhere, on TV, at the supermarket, somewhere that the parent was not aware of. But there's too much evidence against the idea that children only produce language they've heard before. The other aspect that behaviorists don't address is the fact that children do not repeat everything indiscriminately. They focus on new information. Once that's been learned, then they'll start practicing some other new word or phrase. Anatists are led by Chomsky's theory of universal grammar, or UG. He claimed that inside everyone is basic grammar that then just needs to be applied to the particular part of the world and the language that the child is picking up as their primary language. This theory focuses on the success of virtually every healthy child and many unhealthy ones to learn their mother tongue. Children learn many complex grammar patterns without explicit instruction. So Chomsky argues there's something innate that allows the child to learn. Creative mistakes and creative utterances from children are explained through this theory. Even without every aspect of grammar being taught to children, they still can successfully employ every aspect of grammar. Developmentalists tie language learning to the physical growth of the body and the cognitive growth of the brain. For example, according to Piaget, children can't correctly use the term short or heavy until they cognitively are aware that something is short or long or light or heavy. The truth to this theory is that there's some language that learners are not ready to acquire at certain ages or stages of growth. However, it's difficult for me to see how this theory can explain all of the human language acquisition. Interactionists are related to the developmentalists. However, instead of placing the importance on the physical development, they place it on the social and emotional interaction that occurs while maturing. Vygotsky is perhaps the most famous of these. Part of his theory involves the zone of proximal development, ZPD which is the time or stage when children learn because of the trust and relationship they have with another person. ZPD allows kids to acquire more and or faster knowledge than they could independently. Essentially, interactionists propose that language is learned through listening and speaking, especially between birth and turning five years old. This is difficult to prove or disprove. Certainly, there is significant evidence showing that quality interaction, not just one-way communication, results in richer vocabulary and more complex grammar used at younger ages. Connectionists believe that language learning happens just like any other kind of learning, by making meaningful connections. It can be connections between words and actions or locations, but it also can be the connections between the words themselves. This theory, while very different from the innatist perspective, also success successfully explains the creation of sentences that, that the child has never heard before. 
For example, a child may connect the words, Daddy throw ball. The same child may then extend the connection to Daddy throw ball, toy or Daddy watch ball. Connectionists and innatists are able to describe this type of language as creative and original. Behaviorists, developmentalists, and interactionists would say that this language use has been heard before or is just part of their experimentation where they use the interaction to find out if they're correct or not. In summary, connectionists and innatists believe the brain is largely responsible for language learning. The innatists say the grammar was in our brain at birth and we spend the rest of the time discovering it or unlocking it. The connectionists say that we pick up the grammar through connections and events that happen after birth. Behaviorists believe that language is learned through imitation and repetition. Developmentalists feel language is learned as the brain becomes aware of the related concepts. And interactionists place the emphasis in language learning on the social interaction as children grow. As an eclectic person, I'm willing to use parts of each theory if it will help students learn better. How about you?